you know, a few weeks ago, uh, just a week and a half really, we spent seven days looking at seven churches of the Revelation. Jesus was calling all of those churches with the same call. He was calling all of them to become overcomers. You know, he actually made that the minimum standard of what he was looking for. And he was saying, if you're missing the mark, repent and become overcomers. Those churches, they had troubles, but he spoke into them. He encouraged them. And he said, here are the rewards of the overcomer. That is what we are aiming for. We're, uh, we're called to be overcomers. We are called to receive those rewards. You know, we have flaws. At least I have flaws, and I'm suspecting one or two of you may recognize that you have flaws. But the Lord is calling each one of us to repent of our old ways, to forgive up on our old ways of thinking and be overcomers. I mentioned last week, and I was just so struck by it that that Greek word for overcomers is nikoa. And that, out of that comes that trademark Nike, the shoes of champions. Overcomers are champions. And the Greek loved their champions. And they would put them the laurel wreath around their head as champions. But the reason they chose laurel wreaths as opposed to gold crowns was because they couldn't handle the fact that anyone could aspire to being that good. They gave them wreaths that would fade away because they knew that the glory of man would fade away. But we are offered crowns that will never fade away. That's just so, so amusing, amazing. Not really amusing, it's amazing. Uh, but that's 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, that we will receive crowns that will never fade away. And over these next few weeks, um, I may not take a week for each one, but I just want to handle and just share the seven characteristics of an overcomer. The seven characteristics and marks of a champion. And that first mark of an overcomer is total dependence on God. When we had no hope, the Lord saved us. When we were bound, he delivered us. When we were infirm, he healed us. Why would we think for one moment that we could overcome without him? That first mark, the first characteristic of an overcomer is that they are totally dependent on God that they are broken before him and that they are humble. We can't meet God's mark except by his strength. When we actually say we can't do something, we're, we're actually making the statement that I think I'm meant to be able to do it in my own strength. Being dependent on him being humble before him, being broken before him, is actually saying, in my own strength, I can do nothing. But in Christ, all things are possible. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. As we humble ourselves, he is the one that makes us overcome us. We do our part and he does the rest. James 4 verse 10 tells us, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. In everything we are called to be like Christ. And, two, and Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, says Jesus, the King, humbled himself 
rejecting the outward glory to become like us so we could become like him. Jesus the King came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. They were all saying, oh, let's get a big white horse. But he was saying, no, I come in as a humble servant. And the only way for us to be raised up and risen up is to humble ourselves, to surrender ourselves under his mighty hand and let him do the lifting up. I've just been caught this last few weeks about surrender. And it's so, so different from capture. And I know I mentioned this last week, but it's just on my heart. That in that battle, and the enemy comes, and all you can do is say, I give up. You've been captured. You were fighting to the end. But those that say, I recognize. Jesus spoke about it, about a king who looked at the size of the opposition and didn't wait to fight the battle. He just sued for peace. He said, I surrender. When we recognize who Jesus is, we come and we say, I surrender. To be captured by force is to show that we're resistant. He's calling us to surrender ourselves to him. To submit to him. And to allow things to be broken. There's, there's this song that we used to sing. We don't sing it very much. Break me. Melt me. Mold me. And actually, he's up looking for us to allow that breaking to happen. To accept it. There's some beautiful stories about brokenness which speak into humility. Gideon had all of his might taken away, the 30,000 down to 3,000, down to 300, and they were there with their light in a pot. And when the pot was broken, the light shone forth. When there is brokenness in our lives, the light will shine forth. Another broken place was that woman coming in and anointing Jesus, and she broke the alabaster jar, and the perfume flowed out. When we allow our lives to be broken, not resisting everyone, but say, I'm broken before you, out will come the light, out will come the anointing. And God designs things. This is the crazy thing. He actually designs things that are designed to bring us closer to him. He designs things that move things away from our lives, to break things off. And when we just embrace his action in our life, when we embrace his dealings, when we surrender ourselves to him, he begins to work afresh. We have a treasure in earthen vessels. That breaking, that humbling, that tearing down of us actually allows him to shine through. It shows his victory. We are desperate for his victory. He's called us overcomers. The overcomer humbles himself, allows himself to be broken. Just thinking this morning about the, the power of the man at the points on a railway. He has absolutely nothing to do with the power of the train, but he directs it. The Lord's power in our lives come, but we have that place of do I throw the switch or not? Am I going to allow him access into every part of my life or just keep him on the main track and missing?
God is looking for that brokenness. He's looking for that humility in our lives. And he's looking at it in three places. He's looking at first in our intellect. Paul said, I know not as I ought to know. That admitting that actually I don't know everything. It's so easy for us to want to have our hands on everything. It's so easy to go to the other extreme and glorify ignorance. I've seen that so often in the church. But it's the other one of exalting intelligence. Neither of them are what God is calling for because he is saying, you must have the mind of Christ. Hey, he knows everything. It's his strength. It's his glory. He wants us to allow our intellect to be broken so that his mind can be there. He wants to see our emotions broken so that we're not controlled and dominated by every wind that comes, everything that happens. He's not calling us to be stoic. That used to be the way people thought, oh, I'll show I've got control over my emotions by not having any. That isn't what God is ever saying. But he's also saying don't be caught by every wave of emotion that comes. He is saying if we are broken and humble, then we have his feelings, his compassion. We spoke about this a few weeks ago when we mentioned intercession and we, we taught on that. What's happening is that we feel God's feelings. We see as God sees. And probably the hardest part to see broken in our own lives is our own will. But Jesus, our prototype, our example, he said, not my will, but your will. Not my will, but your will. Surrendering our will, humbling ourselves to God's will. That surely is the key and the doorway into becoming an overcomer. One of the challenges is that we sometimes try to adapt and adopt something and take on something. Well, this is the, this is the mold I need to fit into. And the challenge is then, the problem really is that if we adapt to something, there'll be a day when that adaption becomes so uncomfortable that we rebel against it because we've never really submitted to the authority of God. An adapter will always struggle and resist every situation. But he's calling on us. We have a choice as God deals with us, as he turns us, from one degree to another degree as he changes us and as he grows us up we hope we can either humble ourselves and be broken before him or resist and become hardened and confirmed in our pride our humility will always be tested in pressure overcomers are always people who overcome we're called to overcome the flesh, the world, and the devil. The parable of the sower speaks about the seed falling on different kinds of ground, on the path, among the thistles, and, and among the, the, the stony ground. In each one of those, we are called to overcome the work of the flesh, the work of the world, and the work of the devil in our life. Jesus overcame in the wilderness when the enemy came saying, what about this for your flesh? What about this for your fame? What about this for worshiping me? And Jesus said, no, because I am humble before my father. The word is true. That 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 6 tells us, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. He is desiring us to be overcomers. 
there are prizes and victory for the overcomer. What does the overcomer's life look like? The overcomer's life is the word life of a love slave to God. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 17, it says, Then take an awl and pierce his ear into the door, and after that he shall be your slave forever. We sing songs saying, Lord, pierce my ear. We're saying, I willingly come to you. I willingly come. I willingly come before you. And I lay down my life and say, Lord, may I be your slave. May I be your servant. The humble life is the life of a servant devoted to his master. God's calling us to willingly follow him, to serve him, because we, want, we love him and our desperation in our heart is to please him. Galatians 4 verse 1 says that as long as the heir is a minor, he's not really much different from a servant, although he's a master of all of them. The Lord is calling us to be overcomers. And that overcoming is by being a servant, by being a slave to him, surrendering all to him, humbling ourselves. Next time we're going to look at the next characteristic of an overcomer. Because it promises that those who are children of God are overcomers. As today we've looked and seen how humbling ourselves, allowing ourselves to be broken, is the number one mark of an overcomer. Let's remember the prizes that are there for the overcomer. Let's remember the promises that God has made. If there are places where we are missing the mark, he says, simply repent, turn from it, and come back to everything that he has for us. It's so, so exciting that Lord is calling us to be overcomers in this life so that we may receive the prizes of living and serving and ruling with Christ through eternity. Amen.